Hello guys, so welcome to the uh, Fluid Machine D class. In this session, we are going to start the portion called uh, basically Pelton turbines and the reaction turbine that is Francis turbine and Cabernet turbine. And then if time re uh, remains left, then we'll move on to what? Centrifugal pump. So before starting our topic, we would like to just give, we would like to give some, you know, basic idea about this particular topic that is uh, layout of the power plant, how the power plant actually, you know, basically this hydraulic plant will be working. That is what we are going to see. So for that, let me just draw the layout diagram. Now, if I just draw the layout of, you know, hydro power plant, Yeah, so layout. Of. Hydropower plant. What are all the basic component is there? That is what we are going to see. So our aim is to produce the clean energy. Right, basically to generate the electricity, we have many sources, but among, uh, among many sources, we have basically the main source is what nowadays, basically a lot of development has been happening in the solar uh, sector as well as, you know, uh, nuclear sector, but it's still basically the India is more reliable on the what thermal power plants, right? But at the some location, like in the Punjab location, or maybe in the North India, still the power generation has been happening through this hydro power plant. So still we have the importance of, you know, this hydraulic power plants. So we are going to see the basic structure. So first of all, water will be stored in the dam. The water will be stored in the dam. So that the pipe will be connected. So now this is a dam which is storing the water from actually left hand side. Which is storing the water. The purpose of the dam is to what? To store the what? Water. That is the water reservoir we have here. water reservoir we have. So basically what is going to be happening over here. Now the penny stock has been connected. I will tell you what is the meaning of penny stock. Now from here water has been circulated from this particular penny stock. Now there is a one tank that is called surge tank and of course we have the importance of this surge tank. So from here, the water will be coming out. Water will be coming out again from the pipe. And now this has been impinging onto the what? Pelton turbine. So basically I'm drawing the layout. Basically, if you just say, so it will be layout for Pelton V. Pelton V turbine. And I think most of you have done the experiment on this, you know, on the fluid machine lab. lab. So from here, This has been impinging on the cages in which we have in which we have the Pelton wheel. The water has been coming and that has been striking this particular blade, my different. Now due to that, you know, whatever the hydraulic power will be there, that will be converted to, you know, mechanical power. 
Now see here, there is a reserve. Uh, basically, tank is there. This tank I'm calling search tank. So yesterday class we have seen the different different cases of the profiles of the blade. Suppose vertical uh, blade is there or flat blade is there or maybe the curvature blade is there or like just like a aerofoil section blade will be there. And then how the velocity diagram will be looking like at the inlet section and at the outlet section that is what we are actually we have seen in the last class. So from there on we will try to develop the same logic that what we covered for the different four or five cases right. So this is the penny stock. This is what your penny stock is there through which the water has been taken from the reservoir to the what turbine blades. So this is nothing but a bottom line which I'm going to consider. Now from here, the head of the particularly, you know, from here, let me call this to be gross head HG. Gross head HG. Right, and of course, this is what the turbine is there. Turbine is there now. So this is what the layout of the hydraulic power plant will look like. There is a water which is being stored to the dam. From the dam, the water has been uh, conveyed from the basically reservoir to the turbine through the penny stock. In between, we have the search tank. Through that, we basically what we have connected one pipe from the search tank to the turbine so that the water is flowing from here. To penny stock, then like this. So this is the general layout of the basically you know hydraulic power plant. Now, what are all the components are there? That component we need to first of all write. What are all the components we have for this hydraulic power plant? Very first component will be reservoir. Reservoir, right? Now, the reservoir can be two types. One is a artificial. Or one can be natural. Natural reservoir will be just like a lake, lake one, but the artificial, if you want to create the reservoir of the water, then we have to make the dam. So now this is the two types natural reservoir that you can create by using, you know, lake, and then you are having artificial reservoir that is through dam. Whatever I have shown you, that is an artificial reservoir, right? Now, the second component would be your penny stock. The third component would be search time. The what, what about the fourth component that we have to see? What about the fourth component? Okay. And of course we have the part uh, from here that uh, through the turbine, you know, the generator will be connected through that the electricity will be produced. That is a part of the different thing. So basically these three are the main components of the hydraulic power plants. So now one by one, we are going to see the first, okay, reservoir that is okay. Now we'll just try to focus on penny stock. What do you mean by the penny stock? That is what we have to see. So penny stock, basically it is a large diameter, large diameter pipe, which is used to transfer from, uh, which is used to transfer the water from reservoir to turbine. So it is. large diameter pipe yeah tarun can you hear me it is a large diameter pipe used to used to transfer the water From reservoir, from reservoir to turbine. Can you hear me? What's your name? Tarun Kumar. Yes, Tarun Kumar. Can you hear me? Yes, please let me know if you can hear me properly.
No, the main component is search tank. And why we need the search tank? That is what the question mark. So note down the next component that is what we have search tank. One of the very, very important and crucial component of the hydraulic power plant. It is a reservoir of the water located near the turbine, which is used to avoid the water hammer in the penny stock. And it is also acting like a buffer reservoir, which absorb or provide the additional mass of the water to the turbine when it is required. That means, look at the uh, layout of the hydraulic power plant. Whenever the water is coming out from this pipe, there might be possible that the reservoir, so because of some height, whatever the potential energy will be there, that has been converted to what? Suddenly become converted to what? The flowing energy for the fluid. Due to that, it may damage it may damage the wall of the what? Pi, uh, penny stock. Penny stock means just like a pipe only, but larger diameter. Not a smaller diameter. That what you are observing flow through pipes. It will be bigger diameter than those cases. Because of the large amount of pressure forces, because you know that pressure is what? Rho GH. This pressure force will be converted to what? The flowing energy. And that will damage what? Walls of the penny stock. Because of that, to avoid that, we will keep it one more reservoir that is called search tank so that the additional water can be provided. That is the one benefit. But apart from that, the main benefit is what? Suppose any pressure is force is acting on the pipe, uh, pipe wall of the penny stock. Some liquid can be stored like this. Some liquid can be stored over here so that the pressure force will be what? Neglected. Pressure force can be not that much high as you are having what without search tank, right? So that is what the development has been happen uh, while placing the search tank to the what hydraulic power plant. Now, so what will be the search tank? So just note down. So search tank it is a reservoir. It is a reservoir of water. Located near to the turbine, near to the turbine, used to avoid, used to avoid the water hammer. Water hammer means with the large amount of pressure force, it will try to damage the wall of the water penny stock. That is called water hammer. Very, very important. It is used to avoid the water hammer in the penny stock. In the penny stock. And it is also. It is also acts as. Buffer reservoir. Buffer reservoir, which absorbs. which absorbs or provides additional mass of the water additional mass of the water to the turbine when it is required Right. So, Tarun Kumar, I'm audible. Can you please write in the chat section? Tarun Kumar. Yes, Tarun Kumar. Please try to reply me. No, I'm audible. That is fine. But I'm asking that whether you are noting down or not. Are you understanding the class? Perfect. Can I move to the next slide? If it is done, can I move to the next slide? Perfect. Now, try to understand the next concept, the types of head, what we have. Because that is very, very important while calculating the efficiency of the, you know, power plants, basically hydraulic power plants. So types of head, that is also going to be very, very important. Types of head. What are all the types of head we are going to have? That is what we are going to see very, very carefully, very, very carefully we are going to observe. So very first of all, we have the gross head. 
we also call hg it is the difference between headrest level and the telrest level when it is uh, if it is a head under the uh, plant which is working right so total head which is uh, available at the inlet of the turbine the total head available from the headrest level head rest level to the tail rest this is what you have the tail rest the difference between these two will be what cross head this is what we have the cross head the net head is called as what is different from the cross head understanding my point there is a difference between cross head and the net head which are available to the turbine so just note down total head available theoretically at the inlet of the turbine the total head available the total head available at the inlet of the turbine that is called gross head very very important that is called gross head the second would be the second would be my dear friend net head that is h you can call h net h net is basically the actual head available or the actual head available at the inlet of the turbine is called as net head now sir what is the net head what will be the formula for the net head see the formula for the net head will be total gross head minus this is also called total head so total head minus or gross head minus has lot head loss due to friction now anybody know about the head loss due to friction head loss due to friction in the fluid mechanics you might have covered head loss due to friction whenever the flow fluid is flowing in the pipe of diameter d there is a some head loss will occur because of the property called viscosity dynamic viscosity that is what flv square divided by 2 gd irrespective of the whether it is a turbulent flow or you know lambda flow we have the head loss due to friction we have the head loss due to friction and because of that whatever the net head will be there that will be lesser than this gross head understanding my point tell me tarun are you understanding yes you can write in the chat section perfect now once it is done let me know once it is done let me know now try to understand yeah i yeah, got got it now try to understand what will be the power developed see best of, first of all what is going to be happening in the case of pelton wheel now i am going to talk about only about the pelton wheel but before that you must be knowing how the pelton wheel basically blade will look like and that is what the main discussion will happen for for this particular case so pelton wheel is nothing but it is a one of the impulse turbine we also call tangential flow turbine now yesterday we had the discussion on the types of flow basically we have the two types of flow tangential flow and the radial flow what is the meaning of this c suppose this is a shaft and on that shaft we have the basically you know uh, what you can say we have the blading profile something like this suppose this is a vanes or blade 
Now try to observe very carefully. If the flow will happen like this, that is called tangential flow. But if the flow will happen like this, this will be called as radial flow. Understanding my point? Yes or no, guys? So in the Pelton wheel, the flow direction will be something what I have shown to you right now. Right? Yes or no? Yes or no, guys? So what do you mean by the impulse turbine? That is what we have to observe. What do we mean by the impulse turbine? That is what we are going to see. Impulse turbine. What do you mean by the impulse turbine? The water is supplied from the penny stock from the reservoir to the turbine. See, try to observe, try to observe. The water has been supplied by the penny stock from the reservoir to the turbine. Then it enters into the nozzle and comes out in the form of jet. That means there the nozzle will be connected over here. A lot of nozzles will be there, not single nozzle. If you just see the 3D figure, there will be five to six nozzles will be placed surrounding the particular, you know, uh, turbine blade so that they will be throwing the water like anything in the form of jet. Now jet is strike the wind. When the jet strikes the wind, it will exert the large amount of magnitude of the force for a small interval of the time. It is going to apply large amount of force for small interval of the time. This force into dt is called impulse. Understanding my point? That's why the name has been given for this type of turbine as impulse turbine. Understanding my point? That's why because of the fluid uh, pressure or basically the uh, basically the kinetic energy of the fluid that has been converted to mechanical energy or rotational power or runner power so that the road, uh, whatever the blade is there or vein is there, it will start rotating, understanding, at the particular RPM. Yes or no, guys? Understanding? So this is what the development of impulse turbine has been happening, right? So just note on this small thing. Just note on this small thing in the spult impulse turbine. What is the basically the principle? We have to see the principle. Principle is very, very important, my dear friend. Principle is very, very important. What is the entry point at the entry and at the exit? What is the energy that has been available? That is what we have to see. At the entry and the exit, whatever the energy is there, that we have to see. Now tell me what about the entry? Whether the kinetic energy will be there or not? At the entry, whether kinetic energy will be there or not. Tell me guys. At the entry, kinetic energy will be there or not. Perfect. The kinetic energy will be there, my dear, right? Now. When the kinetic energy will be there, that means here we have the kinetic energy. Now tell me what about the change in the pressure energy when it is flowing through the turbine actually. When it is going to flow through the turbine, impulse turbine or the Pelton turbine, why the pressure is same? Right? Here kinetic energy is there. Here also kinetic energy will be there, but it will be minimum. It will be minimum by different. Right? Now. Tell me guys, what is happening? At the inlet, we have the kinetic energy. At the exit, what is the energy we have? At the exit, what is the energy we have? Try to tell me the answer as quickly as possible. Yes. Impulse turbine means only kinetic energy will be important for us. Only kinetic energy will be responsible for rotation. responsible for rotation of blade or vein. Only kinetic energy will be responsible, not the pressure energy, my dear friend. Because, because, because at the entry point number one, at the exit point number two, so P1 will be equal to P2, that is equal to what? P atmosphere. The change in pressure energy will be zero in case of turbine, pelt and turbine. No, don't guys. And V2 will be less than V1. Of course, why it will be less? Because kinetic energy will be given by what? Fluid to the what? Blade. Kinetic energy will be converted, the, whatever the energy will be there of the fluid energy, that will be converted to mechanical energy or rotational energy of the blades, right? 
no doubt so these are the things that is going to be required we are going to follow some assumptions if it is a smooth vein if it is a smooth vein or blade then there will not be any friction so relative velocity will be same at the entry at the exit now what we are talking about relative velocity why the relative velocity is coming you know the concept of the vector you know the concept of vector or not if it is a rough vein then relative velocity will not be the same relative velocity will not be same where k is nothing but coefficient of friction where k is nothing but coefficient of friction please note down very very important But that is done. Perfect. Now, once it is done, now here what we are going to see. First of all, we are going to see the uh, you know the Pelton wheel turbine. What is the component of the Pelton wheel turbine? We have seen the component of the hydraulic power plant. But let me just tell you about the components of Pelton wheel. Pelton wheel turbine. That is a very, very important thing. Now, for this case, what we are going to see? First of all, the casing. Whatever the impulse turbine will be there, that will be placed inside the casing, right? It doesn't have any hydraulic function. It is just used to avoid the splashing of the water because whenever the uh, water will be throwing out in the form of jet to the turbine the turbine will rotate and it will try to throw the water out of that from the out of the zone of the rotational whatever the rotational zone will be there the water will be what thrown out the water will be thrown out from the zone now to avoid the splashing basically what we are doing to avoid the splashing of the water we are just placing in the what casing so this is what we are having the you know so no doubt it doesn't have any hydraulic function. It doesn't have any it doesn't have any hydraulic function. It is used it is used to avoid splashing it is used to avoid this splashing of water. It is used to avoid this splashing of the water, my dear friend. This is a very, very important thing. Please note down. Then we have the second component, very, very important component, nozzle. Nozzle we only use in case of what? Pelton turbine, not in any other turbine. Right? So this is the penny stock through which we have the nozzle has been converted the nozzle has been connected through which the jet of water is coming out from this particular you know uh, from this particular you know, nozzle in the form of jet of diameter small d no doubt so whatever the potential energy will be there that has been converted to what kinetic energy what are the potential energy mgh what are the kinetic energy half of mv square so this will cancel out so what is the v square by 2g that is equal to what h the question mark is whether h is what gross head or net head tell me guys the question is that the whether h is what gross head or net head remember it will be always be h net it will not be gross head please note on very very important so if there is a no loss If there is a no loss in the nozzle, then we can say efficiency of the nozzle will be 100%. See, here it is has been converted to the reservoir and this is having some particular height H net. Whatever the potential energy of the uh, 
Yes or no, guys? That is what happening or not? Tell me, guys. Pressure is what? MGH, rho GQH. That has been converted to what? Kinetic energy of the fluids. But if there is a loss, if there is a loss, then efficiency of the nozzle will not be 100%. In that case, my dear friend, in that case, if there is a losses in the nozzle will be there, then V1 can be calculated. Uh, or let me just call, let me just call where the velocity of, uh, you know, uh, what we are calculating, the velocity in the penny stock we are calculating or velocity this uh, jet we are calculating. Tell me guys. One of the very, very important thing. Yes, please tell me. Please let me know. Whatever V is there, that is what velocity of jet only, my dear friend. Velocity of jet. This is you call V1. Velocity in the penny stock. Both are different. Follow the discharge formula. Q1 equal to Q. That is what? A1, V1, that is equal to what? A into V. Now from here, what we can calculate? V1, V1 will be what? Area into V divided by what? Area 1, that is what? Pi by 4 D square. Through which we can calculate what? V1. That is the velocity in the penny stock, not in the velocity of what? Jet. So here we are calculating V1. V, uh, no, sorry. Here we are calculating only what? V. So here I'm going to write V is equal to CV into under root 2G H net. CV is nothing but coefficient of velocity. It is just showing the uh, basically losses in the nozzle. Coefficient of velocity. Please note down very, very important. What is the value of the coefficient of velocity? Sometimes they are asking in the examination. What is the value? 0 0.962, 0 0.985. No down. 0 0.96 to 0.985. This will be the values of coefficient of velocity for the this particular case. Have you noted down? Noted down? No. The next thing will be my different. We have one more component that is what we have, you know, uh, breaking jet. It is used to basically stop the runner when it is having sufficient, uh, when it is generated sufficient runner power. Suppose we don't want to rotate the uh, particular blades or the you know veins of the uh, Pelton wheel, then we use the breaking jet. Now the next case will be there, very very important component, a runner. What do you mean by the runner? Runner we sometimes call a rotor. Which type of shape it is for Pelton wheel? Which type of shape it is for Pelton wheel? Yes. So it is having a shape of, no doubt, very, very important. The shape of the runner of the Pelton turbine is runner of Pelton turbine. Basically double hemispherical shape. Double hemispherical shape. Yes or no, guys? It is like this. Uh, 
understanding my point it is not like this it is a double hemispherical right so this is wrong this will be the correct one double hemispherical shape right yes or no guys now what are all the things that we need to consider for this pelton turbine now tell me why why the shape is something like that only why the shape is uh, basically double spherical shape kind of thing why not this one this one why only we have the double hemispherical shape as you can see the double folding will be there like this and like this why the shape is something like that only why not some other shape yes Just tell me the answer. Why the shape of the blade is something like a double hemispherical shape, not in the form of other shape? Not knowing the reason. See, what are the advantage? What are the advantage that we are going to see for using this particular type of, you know, hemispherical shape? That is what we have to see. What is the advantage we have? The very first advantage is that impact losses will be minimum. Impact losses will be minimum. What will be the second advantage we are going to have? What is the second going to uh, advantage? Higher efficiency. But before that, I would like to ask you, how can you say that the impact losses will be minimum? See, suppose that the profile is vertical flat plate, something like this. Suppose the shape would have been, the blade shape uh, would have been something like this. The jet of water is coming from uh, nozzle, something like this. It is going to impact like anything. Larger area will be imposed. The larger area it will face by the jet of the water, that particular pay, uh, plate will be facing what? Whatever the jet of water is there, that is going to face a larger amount of area. Area will be high, drag force will be high, the impact losses will be high. So here what is going to happen? High impact forces. Because it is acting for a small period of time, that's why the naming has been given what? Impact forces. But suppose you are going to follow something like this. So what you're going to have is still water is coming out and is striking is still you have the losses. It's still you have the losses, but what will happen? Suppose you are making the shape something like this. It will assume that the whatever this, uh, whatever the thing is there that will be smooth. That means what is going to happen? The water is coming out is striking. What is coming out is striking. That means impact losses will be minimum among all the three cases. If you just consider case number one, case number two and the case number three. Here, the, basically what you can say that, here what we can say that uh, whatever the losses will be there, that will be minimum. Impact losses will be minimum. Impact losses will be impact losses will be minimum by default. Right? So just note down. So it's not a single hemispherical vein, it is a double hemispherical vein. Vein means blade. Both are same thing. Now we are going to see the velocity profile of the Pelton turbine. Now we are going to see the velocity uh, diagram for the Pelton turbine. That is inlet velocity diagram and outlet velocity diagram for the pendal wheel. Once it is done, let me know.
Is it done? Done? Perfect. Now try to understand the velocity diagram for this case, the blading profile will be the blading profile will be double hemispherical. Double hemispherical like this. Now try to understand. The water is coming out from this uh, basically what you can say the nozzle. And now it is going to striking at the middle part only exactly at the middle. Exactly at the middle it is going to striking like this. Now inlet velocity triangle will be suppose the blade is moving with some velocity called u. Now it is a tangential flow. So at the entry point at the exit point it will be same. Suppose this is a one point this is the exit point two point. Exit point two point. Now try to understand one is the entry point two is the exit point. You try to understand. So not on the diagram. Now tell me how the inlet velocity triangle will look like. Have you studied it before? Have you studied this thing before? Yes. Have you studied this thing before? Try to understand. Now the suppose that the bl uh, this blade is moving with some velocity called u. So let me call u is nothing but the blade velocity. U is nothing but what? Blade velocity, my dear friend. Of course, exit point and inlet point is going to have the same velocity u1 equal to u2 equal to what u because entry point and leaving point are at the same radial location. Entry point and exit point are at the same radial location. Suppose it is a striking at this point number one, right? The shape is made such a way that the point number two is also at the same location from the central line of the what? Soft. So, what is the velocity? U is equal to what? R into omega. Because it is what rotating rotational uh, velocity will be what r into omega whatever the radial location for the point number one and point number two it is going to be fixed one don't think it is uh, it is going to have the higher radius r2 than r1 so velocity u2 will be more than u1 no 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 it will not be like that when you see the 3d figure of course I couldn't put over here but if you just see the 3d figure of uh, that Pelton turbine you will you will simply understand what we are talking about we are just tilted this diagram understanding my point. This diagram is basically what we have tilted. We have just taken in the perpendicular uh, in a direction. Try to assume this blade perpendicular to the plane of the board. It is just placed. Suppose your pen is there. Take out your pen. Just keep it like a, what the blade profile has been looking like this in the in front of the laptop. Now, what do you do? Just try to rotate your pen in the ninety degree clockwise. Now it has become flat. It has become horizontal. Now that will be the profile of the blade that I am showing to you right now. Try to understand the point number one and the point number two will be at the same radial location from the shaft. Suppose location. See, it is not in the vertical plane, it is in the horizontal plane. So R2 will be equal to R, uh, you know, R1. Are you understanding what I am saying? It is in the horizontal plane like this and suppose the reference axis is somewhere here so here horizontal plane is there so whatever the point one is there it will also be the same radial location right tell me guys from the reference height are you understanding what i'm saying are you understanding what i'm saying Tell me guys. 
yes now i hope you you people are understanding what actually i'm talking about now the next concept will be when the basically it is striking the what will be the inlet velocity triangle that we need to draw first of all we need to draw the velocity component blade this will be the component of what relative velocity you know that when we are going to join something like this by this vector this will be what complete component v1 how we are drawing vector v will be equal to what vector r plus vector u understanding v1 is what inlet jet velocity inlet jet velocity we are uh, we are is what inlet relative velocity of the jet u is what blade velocity u is what blade velocity my dear friend please note down these are the terminologies that is going to be very very important my dear friend so please note down what will be the angle by which it is going to be tilted this particular yeah can you hear me now the point number 2 is here now the point number 2 is over here now try to understand the water is coming out with respect to blade something like this the water is coming out from the blade section like this what about this angle this angle will be phi what is the phi no don't what is the angle phi what we call phi just note down phi phi is nothing but blade outlet angle Why is nothing but blade outlet angle? We sometimes also call side clearance angle. Sometimes we also call side clearance angle. This this particular angle will be 180 minus phi. That is called delta. That is deflected angle. Not on guys. Very very important terminologies are very very important. You must be knowing the first of all terms to understand the concept. Now, so there is a relative velocity with which it is coming out. V R two with which it is coming out. There is a relative velocity with which it is coming out. Now there is a what? There is a velocity called U. There is a velocity called U. Something like this because the blade is moving with some velocity called U. In the positive x directions. Now, by vector joining, you know that when the two vectors are combined like this, vector a, then we are joining with the what? Vector b. Then what we do? This will represent the vector c, resultant vector. So this is what we have one vector, another vector. Now, if I join by this one, I will be getting one vector that is velocity v. But apart from that, you will be getting one more triangle. This is the velocity v. It is in the what? Which coordinate? It is there in the second coordinate. It has got two components. One is a what? V omega. One is what? V f. I will tell you what is the meaning of V omega and V f. Just note down. So this component would be this component will be V omega two, and this component will be V r V f two. V f two. So what is the meaning of uh, VR2 and VF2? V omega is nothing but whirl velocity whirl velocity of the you know or simply you can just write whirl velocity. This is the velocity that will be responsible for rotation of the blade. No doubt. Whirl velocity. V is, VF is nothing but flow velocity. Vf is nothing but flow velocity. Vw is nothing but whirl velocity. Not wrong, guys. Very very important.
Now, is it done? Is it done? So this angle will be phi. This angle will be beta. This angle will be beta. What is the beta angle? What we call beta? What we call beta? Yes. We also call this thing to be water angle at the outlet by which the water has been deflected. That is a phi. That is a different thing. That is a blade angle. That depends. What is the value of the phi? That will depend how much a blade has been tilted like this or like this. You know, so this will phi the phi value will depend on that. But beta value is not depend on that. Beta value is just saying that outlet water angle of the blade. But not blade, a water angle at the what outlet that is what the beta we have now done, done right. So, first of all, note on the discharge q is nothing but area into velocity that is what we have pi by 4 d square into v that is what the discharge value we have right. Note down discharge. What are the next we have? Once we have the discharge, what will be the water power? Or we also call hydraulic power. That is equal to mg into h, mg into h net. This will also be called as rho g q into h net. This is called water power and hydraulic power. Now, my dear friend. So, let me again draw the outlet velocity triangle diagram. Vr2, this is u, v, vr2, sorry, vf2, v omega2. Right now, my dear friend, this is the value phi. This is what we have beta. This is what we're gonna have the beta. So, this whatever I have drawn that is nothing but outlet velocity diagram of Pelton turbine. Of Pelton turbine, my dear friend, right. Understood? Understood? Now, so basically, uh, what is the water velocity? What do you understand by the wall velocity, guys? What do you understand by the wall velocity? Yes. Not only next uh, next formula, that is nothing but the runner power. We also call RP. Runner power will be runner power will be force in the x direction into u. Fx into u that will be your what runner power, my dear friend. But before that, what will be the values of the Fx? What with what force it is going to be exerted? So mass flow rate, so force is what? Force is change in momentum. What is the value of the force? Force is nothing but change in momentum. That is nothing but initial momentum minus final momentum. Initial momentum minus final momentum. This is the mass flow rate. This is the mass flow rate, my dear friend. This is nothing but the mass flow rate. 
of the water that has been coming out from the nozzle in the form of jet v omega 1 that is the inlet water velocity see this v1 will be equal to v omega 1 because v1 is having only one component it is in this direction so that is what v1 that is equal to v omega 1 right simply it is going to have only one velocity that is whirl velocity at the inlet right whirl velocity at the inlet or inlet whirl velocity we say minus half of the mass half of the mass is going out that is what it is coming like this half of the mass is coming like this and half of the mass is going like this because it is just striking at the middle section so it is just like a symmetrical one so what we can do half of the mass flow it is going in the upper direction what will be the component of v omega 2 positive or negative this is positive this is going to be negative so it is what minus v omega 2 in the force change in momentum what is the change in momentum mass flow rate into velocity velocity which velocity will be responsible for the force whirl velocity not any v not any vr not any u you have a lot of velocity, but out of that, only one velocity will be responsible for rotation, right? Plus mass for it by 2. At the bottom, at the bottom also, what we have? At here also, what we have? We have the same diagram, like this. We are going to have the same diagram, my dear friend, right? And again, we are going to have the velocity, what? V omega 2 in the opposite direction. So now, if you just calculate, Fx will be mass flow rate v omega 1 plus v omega 2. Hold on guys, very very important. Now if I multiply, I will be getting what? Runner power like this. So just note down the general runner power v omega 1 plus minus v omega 2 into u. That is going to be your runner power. That is going to be your runner power. Please note down, very very important. What will be the soft power? The power which are coming, uh, which are coming out of this particular soft, which are exactly connected to the what blades. Then this is nothing but soft power will be runner power minus mechanical losses. You know that in the blades, a lot of losses will be there, right? Surging, choking, stalling that is there in the turbo machinery. But of course, we are not going to cover those things. So that is going to be considered as losses. Are you understanding? So, how many power we got? Water power, runner power, and then we got third is what? Soft power. So, based on this, we are going to calculate the efficiency, right? Yes or no? Whether it is done? Is it done? No. So what we are going to calculate? We have just calculated the runner power, water power and soft power. Now we are going to write the efficiency. So very first efficiency we are going to have. So very first efficiency we are going to have is hydraulic efficiency. Hydraulic efficiency is basically it is a ratio of the runner power by water power. It is a ratio of the runner power by water power or hydraulic power. That is what you, you are going to have rho into q into v omega 1 plus minus v omega 2 divided by uh, water power as rho g q into what h so this will cancel out so what you are going to get g into what h so that is what we have the follow for the what hydraulic efficiency the next will be mechanical efficiency. 
mechanical efficiency will be soft power by mechanical efficiency will be soft power by runner power right so basically it is uh, you know soft power by runner power as what what we know rho q see G, g will also be not becoming because here it is mass flow rate so what is the mass flow rate rho into q yeah perfect correct correct so rho v omega 1 plus minus v omega 2 into u that is what we have the runner power that is what we are calculating the water power uh, mechanical efficiency third will be overall efficiency Overall efficiency will be hydraulic efficiency multiply with the what mechanical efficiency that is going to give you the overall efficiency that is nothing but soft power by water power. Soft power by water power my dear friend. Now we are going to prove one very, very important for the given inlet conditions. What will be the maximum efficiency of the hydraulic turbines, Pelton turbines, especially if I talk about the Pelton turbine, what could be the maximum value that we are going to get it? That is what we are going to see now. So we are going to write the maximum efficiency of the hydraulic machine or Pelton turbines. What, what will be the condition? What will be the condition for maximum hydraulic efficiency of Pelton wheel? That is what the very big question mark is there and that is what we are going to solve it. Assuming no losses in the nozzle. Assuming the no losses in the nozzle, now hydraulic efficiency we know that rho into q into v omega 1 plus minus v omega 2 into u. Now let me just take the plus value. Let me just take the cases what we have seen divided by water power that is what water power is equal to what kinetic energy because there is no losses in the nozzle. So basically what is the nozzle efficiency? Nozzle efficiency you can write how much of kinetic energy by water energy we have right so what is going to be answer so hydraulic efficiency is nothing but runner power divided by water power rho g q h but i'm going to write half of mass for it into v1 square that is i'm going to write the kinetic energy because the losses are negligible in the nozzles so here what i'm going to write mass for it this will cancel out so two times of v omega 1 v omega 2 into u divided by what v1 is square v omega 1 is what v1 v omega 1 is what v1 from the outlet triangle diagram vf2 v omega 2 u2 V2, this is 5. What are the cos 5 from this diagram? What are the cos 5? Can I write U2 plus V omega 2? Pi VR2. So VR2 will be equal to what? K times of VR1. That is what? K times of what? V1 minus U. Then what from here we can get from V omega 2? V omega 2 will be k times of v1 minus u into cos phi minus u2. Of course, u2 is what? u only. Of course, u1 equal to u2 is equal to what? u only. Right? So, please note down till this part.
perfect now so hydraulic efficiency will be calculated as 2 times of v1 plus v mega 2 what is the v mega 2 we can write k times of v1 minus u cos 5 minus u into u divided by v1 square so what we are going to go, going to get it for maximum or minima what we do we just differentiate and equate to what zero we just differentiate and equate to what zero now with respect to what we have to do the differentiation with respect to what we have to do the differentiation see whatever the kinetic energy uh, can, whatever the kinetic energy of the fluid is there that is the inlet energy for the given inlet condition what you can modify you can modify blade speed so we are going to differentiate see by looking at this one hydraulic efficiency is a function of u and v1 but we have to differentiate with respect to what u only to getting the maximum efficiency because inlet condition is fixed you cannot change the inlet condition and you will be getting the maximum efficiency no not like that so what we are going to do we are going to differentiate with respect to u this hydraulic efficiency that what we have written so now if i am going to differentiate d by du of whatever you got the equation that is uh, you know 2 times of v1 plus k times of v1 minus u into cos 5 minus u divided by v1 square and of course we have you know uh, u is nothing but u1 equal to u2 equal to what u only so now if you just differentiate you will be getting what u is equal to v1 divided by 2 so this is what the condition for maximum efficiency of pelt and turbine of pelt and turbine if you if you rotate the blade speed if you just rotate the blade with the half of the inlet velocity of the fluid then we will be getting the maximum efficiency my dear friends and what is the maximum efficiency maximum hydraulic efficiency 1 plus k cos phi divided by 2 no down very very important this is what we have the maximum efficiency my dear friends what is the condition we have blade speed must be half of the inlet jet speed simply we say now once it is done let me know so this is what we have the maximum hydraulic efficiency my dear friends right now we are going to solve some of the question for this uh, pelton turbine just look at the question that we are going to see now try to observe this question and let me know the answer for this question If the outlet angle of the bucket of the Pelton turbine wheel is 60 degree, that is phi. The maximum efficiency in case of Pelton turbine is what? Maximum efficiency, you know that 1 plus k cos phi divided by 2. But we know that, my dear friend, k is nothing but what? k is nothing but what? What do you mean by the k value? What do you mean by the k value? Yes. K is nothing but coefficient of what? Friction, right? When the blade is having some friction, that is going to be there, but neglecting the friction means what? K value will be 1. So maximum efficiency will be what? 1 plus cos phi divided by 2. Put the value, get the answer. Cos 60 is what? 1 upon 2. So 1 upon 2 by 2, that is nothing but what? 3 by 2, 3 by 4. 
So what will be the answer? 75 percentage, right? So just note on the uh, questions and answer. What is the pressure inside the pelton turbine, pelton turbine casing at the inlet and at the outlet? The pressure will be same, my dear friend, inside the casing. Pressure will be atmosphere only. It will remain same. Right? So, note down this is also very, very important. Now, moving on to the next question. Yeah, it's a little bit of not that much stuff, but still we have the very important of this numerical with respect to gate point of view. Also, it's a very, very important numerical. So this has been asked in Odisha Public Service Commission in Pelton wheel, the bucket peripheral speed, bucket peripheral speed means with what velocity the bucket has been rotating. That is nothing but U, U1 equal to U2. That is what 10 meter per second. The water gate velocity that is inlet velocity is what? 25 meter per second and so by this you can calculate vr1 what is that v1 minus u that is only about what 15 meter per second for ideal condition they mentioned that means there is a no loss no loss that means what this will be equal to what vr2 vr1 will be equal to what vr2 that is nothing but what 15 meter per second volumetric flow has been given 0.1 meter cube per second if the jet deflected angle is what now the delta has been given 120 degree then what about the phi value 60 degree this angle they have given 120 then we have to find this angle right phi that is nothing but what 60 degree they are asking fluid idea flow, flow is ideal what will be the power developed power development means a runner power they are asking rho into q into v omega 1 plus v omega 2 into u put the value get the answer try to do it now pause the video for two minutes and try to solve it now if you just observe v omega 1 is what v1 only and from the outlet velocity triangle diagram, from the phi, what you can calculate cos phi. What is the cos phi? U plus V omega 2 divided by what? V R1. Because V R2 is what? V R1 only. Fifteen cos sixty minus U. So what are you going to get it? 15 cos 60 is what? 7.5 minus u. u is what? So it is 2.5 minus 2.5 value meter per second. Now, whatever the answer you got, keep the same answer because you did not keep plus minus. You did not keep it plus minus. You just keep it. View mega 2 is what? Minus 2.5 in that particular formula, the same formula, right? So what you will be getting my different? What you will be getting the answer? Check it out. Rho is what thousand? I'm not going to get it uh, from here because we have to calculate in kilowatt. V mega V mega one is what? That is nothing but twenty five only. Minus two point five into velocity. What is the velocity ten? So now when you just keep it out, you will be calculating twenty two point five kilowatt. 22.5 kilowatt that is what you are going to get the runner power my dear friend very very important please note down so this is whole scenario and idea about the pelton turbine 
and this is more than sufficient for your examination that whatever we are going to cover that is already we have covered it now we have to take it out some point about the reaction turbine we also call impulse reaction turbine first of all we will understand the uh, principle on what principle it is going to working right Now, try to understand the next topic that is a very, very important topic, reaction turbine. We will just see the little bit idea about that, not in detail. Reaction turbine, we also call impulse reaction turbine. What are the similarity? What are the differences? That is what we are going to observe very carefully. So there also we have just seen the entry. And here also we are going to see the entry and exit. So here kinetic energy plus potential energy will be there same as before also, but at the exit P2 will be minimum V2 will be minimum, but still it is going to have kinetic energy plus potential energy. There will be changes in the pressure energy first time you are observing here. The pressure will not be constant. Here pressure will vary. That is the first thing you need to understand. Of course, P2 will be lesser than P1 only. And V2 will be much, much lesser than V1 only. There's no doubt. But it may be possible that VR2 will be more than VR1 because of blade friction and all. Right? Now. Now. What we are going to see. So under this category, we have one famous example. Francis Turbine. Under this, we have one famous example that is Francis turbine, very, very important. Reaction turbine, we also call impulse reaction turbine. We also call impulse reaction turbine. So try to understand the logic and what actually principle is. What I talk about the impulse turbine, the amount of water force that has been exerted for a very, very small amount of time because of that, it is going to start rotating. That is nothing but impulse reaction concept, impulse concept. But what is the difference between impulse reaction turbine and simple uh, impulse turbine? The water has been supplied from the peristalk to the turbine. Now that has been entering into the casing, which is considered as a part of the turbine. Inside the casing, now there is a no nozzle. There will be number of guide vanes will be there, which basically present uh, in the form of what? Basically to provide the direction to the water in the form of what? So that the water can be come out or coming from the what outlet to inlet in the form of what in the radial directions as the water enters over the runner it has both the pressure and kinetic energy as the water is strike the vein it will exert large amount of pressure force called impulse force for a very very small amount of time that the, that's the naming has been given what impulse force because force into dt will be what impulse as the water is flowing over the vein as the water is flowing over the vein the pressure will be decreases the loss in the pressure energy of the water is happening because of the aerodynamic shape of the body. Due to decrease in pressure, due to decrease in pressure, the water exerts some additional forces over the wind. It is called reaction forces. Therefore, this type of turbine is having both the impacts, that is impulse force as well as pressure force, both are there. That's why the naming has been given what? Impulse reaction turbine. Impulse force because of that impulse will be coming and because of the reaction forces that that has been there because of what the decrease in the pressure value because of that we are giving the name called impulse reaction turbine right so very very important now so in this case if it is a smooth wind even though it is a smooth wind, VR2 can never be equal to what? V, uh, VR1 because P1 is what? More than P2. Pressure has been changes. When the pressure will be changes, the relative velocity will also be changes. When the pressure will be changes, the relative velocity will also be changes, my dear friend, right? 
So this is a very, very important highlight point. Please note it down. Now, let me show some diagram that will be useful for you. Try to understand the diagram. What is the safe profile for this, uh, what you say, impulse turbine? Semi-spherical or double hemispherical, uh, what we say, uh, blade profile is there. But here it is aerodynamic blade profile, we are going to have it. So let me just draw the diagram so that I can explain you the working principle of Impulse reaction turbine, rather to say we are dealing with the Francis turbine directly. Now there is a no nozzle, there will be guide winds. There is a no nozzle, there will be guide winds. The water is coming from the reservoir. Water is coming out. Water is coming out from the reservoir. Now it is entering. Now it is entering through this particular uh, what we can say fixed blade or guide winds. Guide winds, and this is nothing but your, you know, moving blade. or wind. So this is what you are going to have the casing. Now this has been rotating. Here if you just write H suppose head which is available that is nothing but P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2g where V1 is nothing but the velocity with which this water is coming out, coming inside the moving blades like this. Now the radial locations are different. See, R2, R1. When the radial locations are different, R2 is what? Lesser than R1, then U2 will be lesser than U1. So U1 and U2 will not be same. Blade velocity at inlet and outlet will not be same in this case. It is entering radially. It is entering radially. But there, in the impulse turbine, it was uh, moving what? Tangentially. It was moving what? Tangentially, my dear friend. Right? So, not only a few important points regarding this. Guide veins or fixed veins. Now we are going to see the velocity triangle diagram for this impulse reaction turbine. Try to observe, very, very important, try to observe. In fact, I'm drawing the velocity triangle diagram for impulse, uh, Francis turbine. Impulse reaction turbine. That is nothing but Francis turbine. That is nothing but radial flow turbine. Francis turbine means V omega 2 will be minimum, that is 0. 
right? How and why that detailing will be given in the gate course. Right now we are dealing with the what HL examination. Just remember the uh, whirl velocity at the outer will be what for the Francis turbine it will be zero. Now the blading will be what aerodynamic state. This is rotating with the uh, angular velocity called omega. Now the inlet velocity diagram will be like this. Velocity v1 is there. Vector u and then it is going to be what? It is going to be what? A radial, uh, re, uh, no, relative velocity will be something like this. So this will be your v omega 1. This will be your v f 1. Outlet diagram will be like this. Outlet diagram will be like this. Phi alpha theta. Alpha is nothing but inlet fluid angle or jet angle. Phi is nothing but outlet blade angle. It is not a symmetrical one, it is unsymmetrical blading. No doubt. Unsymmetrical blading. That's why inlet and outlet angle is what different. It is not exactly symmetric. Where you are uh, thinking that whatever the theta is there, that is equal to phi. No, it's not like that. It is an unsymmetrical blading. So theta will not be equal to phi. That is the first and foremost thing. Inlet blade angle. So note on the diagram, this is a very, very important. Of course, VR1 and whatever the VR2 is what? Relative velocity of the water with respect to blade. For this impulse reaction turbine, we will define one term degree of reaction. Note down degree of reaction. This is a one term we are defining degree of reaction. What are the definition of the degree of reaction? That is what we are going to see. Note down the uh, definition of the degree of reactions. The change in pressure energy head. The change in pressure energy head. Over the runner. Divided by total change in kinetic energy. Divided by total change in kinetic energy. divided by total change in kinetic energy. So what is the degree of reaction? Sometime we represent it by R, P1 minus P2 by rho G divided by runner power divided by mass flow rate into G. Runner power divided by mass flow rate into G. Total change in kinetic energy plus pressure energy. That you need to write. Right? Now, if I'll ask you what is the degree of reaction for impulse turbine or Pelton turbine? Big zero. Because there is no pressure changes will happen in, uh, throughout the course of the uh, you know, flow duration. So, degree of reaction will be what? Zero for the impulse turbine, uh, this impulse turbine or Pelton turbines. Right? No doubt. You can write for impulse also, pure impulse turbine. Right. 
now we'll try to develop some formula for you know we will try to see the specific speed of the turbine now we will try to see the specific speed of the turbine what do you mean by the specific speed of the turbine but before that we will try to categorize one more thing kaplan turbine note down kaplan turbine that is the axial flow turbine axial flow reaction turbine Now, among all, if I'll ask you, if I'll just asking you the values of, you know, based on the head condition and discharge condition, which is going to be give the higher value of the conditions. So, see how you can classify the turbine based on the specific speed of the turbine. Also, you can classify the different categories. You can categorize the turbines. So, just note down what do you mean by the specific speed? What do you mean by the specific speed? Just note down. It is the speed of geometrically geometrically similar turbine, which would produce Unit power when working when working under unit head. It is used to compare it is used to compare different turbines. irrespective of their sizes right so turbine can be selected based on the specific speed and that is what our next segment will be that is what our next segment will be so now try to understand how we can classify so classification of the turbines we can also do based on specific speed also classification of turbines Suppose first classification I'm doing based on head and discharge. Which turbine is working under how much head available at the inlet? Whether it is a high head, low head, or medium head. So head I'm just writing over here. If the head is more than 250 meter and Discharge, of course, height, head will be more, discharge will be low. Why? What is the soft power? Overall efficiency into rho g into q into h. For maintaining the same soft power, if head will be more, discharge will be less, right? For maintaining the same soft power I'm talking about. So q will be what? Low. If head will be more, high head. To more than 250 meter, we call generally high head turbine and low discharge turbine. And the turbine will be coming under this category will be called your famous Pelton turbine. Suppose head is medium head in between 50 to 250 meter, but the discharge is medium, then we say it's a Francis turbine. But suppose it is a low head turbine, less than 50 meter, but producing high discharge, then we say propeller and Kaplan turbine. Kaplan turbine. Please note down very, very important. This is the classification based on the discharge, uh, discharge as well as what? Heading condition. Whatever the head that is available at the inlet section of the turbine. Very, very important. Now we can classify based on the specific speed also based on the classification of the turbine based on specific speed value. Before that, what is the formula for the specific speed of the turbine? No doubt. N into 
under root q n into under root p power divided by h to the power 5 by 4 divided by h to the power 5 by 4 but the unit you need to be take care the unit will be n will be in rpm soft power will be in kilowatt h will be in what meter right so just note down based on the specific speed low specific speed when it is running under very low rpm less than 60 then it is what felton above uh, no up to what we'll say is 60 to 300 60 to 300 my dear friend we just say francis turbine in between 300 to 1000 we say kaplan turbine and propeller turbine right so not on very very important classifications is there So remember, we don't have any particular unit for a specific speed, right? Now you might be thinking, sir, why the Pelton is working under low speed only? You can just verify it. N is what? NS is directly proportional to what? Under root of P, right? Under root of what? P. Or we can say that NS is inversely proportional to what? Head. That means directly proportional to what? Somewhat we can say Q. Right. When it is working under low discharge, the speed will also be low. That is a simple fundamental thing we have. Right. Now, not only some of the formula. Model prototype relations. Not only formula for model and prototype relations. Suppose you have the prototype. Suppose you have the prototype, my dear friend, right? Because whatever the actual designing is there, that is the prototype. But in some time laboratory, we have to test it. That is what we learned in the fluid mechanics dimensional analysis. So we have to have some relationship between prototype and what model that has been given by H by D square and square that is equal to constant. H is nothing but head, D is nothing but diameter, N is nothing but what RPM. Power divided by d to the power 5 and q that is also what constant and one more last formula will be q divided by dq into n that is equal to what constant right so that's uh, all the things that we cover in this particular topic not on very very important Now in this segment, last one will be centrifugal pump. Just note down, I will be giving you a small idea about this centrifugal pump. Now centrifugal pump. What do you understand by the centrifugal pump? It is a reverse of the, it is a reverse of the inward flow reaction turbine. I, all I can say. The water is coming from guide vanes to fix vein, uh, from guide vane to what moving blade, but in the centrifugal pump, it is water has been thrown out. That's the name outward outward flow reaction turbine. Outward flow reaction turbine, my dear. What will be the velocity triangle diagram for this case? That is a, again very, very important thing. 
the vein type which type of vein we uh, basically take it we take backward veins right now vf1 that is equal to v1 here v omega 1 will be 0 and here u2 will be more than u1 that you can clearly observe So here what you can have alpha 90 degree right so this is especially for what velocity triangle diagram for centrifugal pump not down very very important Now we'll try to see some of the definite uh, some of the definitions for the hydraulic uh, efficiencies. Here we call manometric efficiency. Reverse water power at the outlet we are getting and impeller power. Impeller power means runner power only. We are calculating. This is what we have. Impeller power. What is the formula? Rho into Q into V omega two U two because V omega one is what zero what a power you know that rho g q into what hm manometric head then we have the mechanical efficiency that is impeller power by soft power and overall efficiency will be manometric efficiency into what mechanical efficiency Note down specific speed of the pump formula, very, very important. Specific speed of the pump this will be the formula for specific speed of the what pump. Remember, specific speed is not the criteria for selecting the pump. Unlike what we have the turbine, based on this we can select the turbine, but here we cannot select the pump based on what? Based on, based on what? Specific speed. So specific speed is not the criteria, not a criteria for selecting the pump. Unlike turbine. So not on very very important once it is done we can leave for the today's session right okay guys thank you